as someone who comes from the south the southern meal starts with the sweet so let me start with a point of agreement with mr varma on the aspect of colonization and on the impact of colonization i don't think i have anything to disagree with at all that it has much more pernicious and far more let's say far reaching effects than the use of the sword i completely agree with on that and i think we are still reeling from the impact of it which is very clear i don't think we are wearing the mughal clothes we are wearing the clothes of the british man for all practical purposes at least some of us so therefore i understand that particular issue but this much is clear from the points made by mr kurshid and mr varma that one believes that that was a wave of migration and the other is clear citing material that this was not a migration this was a bloody invasion as bloody as it could get in the history of human kind now this is what i wish to highlight to make one point to choose to make uh, to choose to observe a strategic silence in the interest of peace is very different from actively indulging in denial of history and that's exactly where the problem starts <coughs> so if an entire school is established that goes about whitewashing stuff as opposed to saying let's not touch this particular aspect of history which i think is also not possible how do you choose to remain silent over one particular aspect of your history that's not going to happen so then the only option is to speak about it now why should this the discussion with respect to something that has happened in the past result in acrimony in the present unless someone relates to the invader even in the present and someone does not relate to the invader even in the present in which case the two nation theory is well alive and kicking that's one but factually speaking one particular trope i think needs to be busted because i think it's been sold well beyond its sell by date i'm sorry to say after partition people did not choose to stay here the elections prior to the partition of 1946 spoke volumes and that's a very clear decision taken at the ballot and therefore when you choose to speak about history let's be clear that perhaps practical considerations came into existence which prevented a mass migration but certainly not patriotic considerations or bhartiya considerations i think that myth needs to be busted and we cannot sell it any further three on ganga jamni tehzi well while i have several reservations with dr ambedkar the one thing that he was crystal clear about in his book pakistan or the partition of india which was published on the eve of the partition two books were published by rajendra prasad in 1946 and dr ambedkar in 1946 <coughs> in which he clearly says that the so called ganga jamni tehzeeb or the syncretic culture that is celebrated over and over again is a product of the incomplete conversion of the converted hindu to islam and therefore multiple waves of attempts have been made on a regular basis to remove the re the remnants of that hinduness from that particular convert which is what has been pushed in this country as what we know as wahhabism to say that the new convert shall identify himself with the early early converts to islam and therefore you cannot have any any ties whatsoever or any cultural practices whatsoever which remind you of your ancestor that starts with the language that moves to dressing so on and so forth so let's be clear if acrimony is the result or is going to be the result of a discussion with respect to the medieval period in current day bharat and contemporary bharat that is because there are still people who relate to this particular person or this particular period <laughs> had that not been the case why should there be a resistance with respect to the re reclamation of a particular uh, let's say structure that was built by an invader whether it's babri masjid or gyanwapi mandir or so on and so forth these were built by invaders obviously they were not built after the independence of this particular country this is not a structure that has come into existence after 15th of august 1947 why do you relate to this particular structure because the mindset that has been imposed on you at the peril of the sword and at, at, uh, let's say at the pain of death prevents you from accepting your past and therefore it's going to be a constant tussle each time there's a discussion with respect to the past so i refuse to buy the fact that history is no more relevant or that uh, it's possible for us to have these discussions objectively i agree with mr varma on this point it cannot be objective that's exactly why i concluded my first opening submission by saying all of us have our biases it's impossible for us to say that we don't have biases we are human beings impossible we may choose not to bring out certain proclivities and let's say ideological uh, leanings uh, to the fore for reasons of pragmatism whatever it may be but let the evidence speak for itself 
But if the evidence leads to a different conclusion and it has consequences on the street or elsewhere, then the people who choose to resort to the street merely because truth is being presented in a public forum are to be blamed, history is not to be blamed, and certainly not those people who wish to present that version of history before the public. Mr. 